Hello. In this tutorial for the Code.org App Lab environment, you will learn about processing lists. This video uses the text mode. However, if you want to see this in the block mode, check the link in the video description or click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's look here. We've got two lists, animal names and animal species. The specific type of list this is, is an array. So an array is a type of list. In the curriculum material, you'll often see them use the term list. When I use the term array, I'm just being a little more specific. And arrays are a special type of variable where it can hold different values in different compartments. So this would be compartment zero, also known as index zero, compartment one, also known as index one, and so on. If you wanna learn more about lists check resource one in the video description. So we have these two lists. This one shows animal names and this one shows animal species. And the animal names correspond to the species of the particular animal. You can see I played around with the spacing a little bit so they're lined up nicely. Here I've declared another variable, animals filtered. And you see I've declared it but I haven't initialized it. So we're gonna have to initialize this later but I declared it out here because I want it to be a global variable. Next, I'm calling the function filter animals. So let's look at this function here. So filter animals, I'm creating a local variable. You see, I declared it inside the function. So it's a local variable called target and set it equal to dog. So we're going to be looking for dog. If we wanted to look for something else, we'd have to change the code here. Then we're initializing this global variable we create here, and we're setting it equal to an empty array. So we're not creating a new variable because we don't have var here. We want to take the existing variable and set it equal to an empty array. And we're doing that because every time we call filter animals, we want it to start off with an empty array. Now we have a for loop here that's going to go through the entire list animal species. So it starts off at zero because the first index is always index zero. And it continues as long as i is less than the length of animal species. Now in this case, animal species length is one, two, three, four, five, six. That means I'll get up to five because five is less than six. And our last index in an array is gonna be one less than the length. So this will be index five. And after each cycle through the loop, it's gonna add one to i. If you wanna learn more about for loops, check out resource three in the video description. So every time it goes through, it's gonna access index i. So i is gonna start out with zero and go all the way up to five. And it's gonna check if what's in there is equal to target. And target is of course dog in this case. We're using two equals for comparison. So there's circumstances where you wanna use one, two, or three equals. Two equals and three equals are checking equality. So with an if, you always wanna use two or three equals. To learn the difference between one, two, or three equals, check out resource four in the video description. So we're checking if the animal species equals to the target, which is in this case dog. And if it is, we want to add to the end. So we say append item, which means add to the end. We're adding to the end of the list animals filtered, which starts off empty, whatever animal name is in that specific index. So, you know, we're searching for a dog. Oh, this is not true. Dog is not equal rabbit, so we're not going to do anything with this one, but then when we get to dog, so dog does equal dog here, then we're gonna add, and again, we're taking out an animal name, so we would take out rover, because rover is at the same index as dog, and we would add rover to the end of animals filtered. And we'd go through the entire list, and every time we find a dog, we'd take out name in the corresponding animal names list. And when we get to the end of the for loop, then we get to the end of the function, so we go back here, down onto the next line, and then we print off the array animals filtered. You can see there is no specific index here. So it's not going to print off a specific index of animals filtered. It's going to print off the entire array. And if it's pulling out all the dog names, that'll be Rover and Buddy. So animals filtered should have Rover and Buddy in it because those are the two dogs. So let's run this and see what we get. We get Rover and Buddy. Now let's talk about improvements we could make to this program. First of all, we've hard coded in the animal names and animal species. So if we wanted to come up with a different list, we would have to change our code and that's probably not very efficient. So we'd be better off importing 
these from a table. So we can import a column from a table. If you want to learn how to do that, check out resource number two in the video description. Another thing that this program lacks is the easy ability to customize what we're looking for. So we call filter animals, and it's always going to set target equal to dog. What would be even better is if we could pass a value to filter animals that would determine what we're searching for. So instead of just always searching for dog, we just pass a value for whatever we want to search for. And that requires a parameter. And if you want to learn how to use parameters, check out resource number five in the video description. Some final things to think about is that there's all sorts of interesting things we could do when processing lists. We could look for a specific type of item. We could look for an item of a specific length. We could look for an item that starts or ends with a specific letter. We could take input from a user and search for something based on that. So don't limit yourself to this when you're figuring out how to process lists. If you want to learn how to take user input from a text box, check out resource six in the video description. If you're using this video to help you with a class project or an AP Create task, make sure to check with your instructor about the rules for using outside resources or how to cite code. Also, you can check resource seven, citing code for the create task. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.